What's going on guys? Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Amigos Code. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about JavaScript. In this Mastery JavaScript course, I teach you everything you need to know about this awesome programming language that can be used for the back end and front end. So here I go over the basics of JavaScript, then teaching you JavaScript the right way, type coercion, data structures, arrays, maps, sets, classes, promises, async, await, how to handle errors, NPM, testing with Jest, Express, and React.js. So this is the complete package for you to master this programming language. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. Also comment down below, and I'm gonna leave a coupon code for the entire course, which you can find under the description of this video. Without further ado, let's kick off this crash course. Let's together write our very first JavaScript code. What I want you to do is, if you are using Chrome as your default web browser, go ahead and right click on your page and then click on inspect. And in here you should see that we have elements, console, source, network, performance. So what I want you to do is click on console and in here we can write any JavaScript code. So together let's type and let me just zoom in so you can see everything. So together let's type console dot and then log and here add double quotes and then say hello and then JS for JavaScript and then add double quotes on the other side and then end up with parentheses. Now, if I press enter, have a look. Hello, JS, and then we have undefined. So similarly, if I type console dot and then log, and then here, if I say 10 plus and then 10, and then if I press enter, you can see that we have 20 in here. And console.log is a function that writes a message to the debugging console more on it later. So basically you can write JavaScript code through your web browser. And also if you are using, for example, Firefox, so in here I've got Firefox and I'm going to right click, inspect, and you can see that it looks a little bit different, but it's all the same. So here, have a look. So if I zoom in as well, we have console in here and I can't really zoom in as Chrome, but here I can type console, dot and then log and then 10 plus and then 10 and you can see that we have 20 and then undefined so there you have it so this is your very first javascript code through the web browser so you've executed your very first javascript code now let me go over about some of the things that you should really know about JavaScript because it will make you understand this language moving forward. So JavaScript formerly was known as LiveScript and this was back in 1995. It is also the most popular languages used in web browsers. Majority of the websites will have some sort of JavaScript code in it. Now, one thing to note is that JavaScript is not Java. So JavaScript is one language and the one that you are learning in this course. And then Java is a completely different language. So never get confused between these two languages. Also, JavaScript is known to be as an interpreted language. So this means that there is no need to compile your JavaScript code into machine code so that the CPU can execute it. So there is no need for that. So the JavaScript code does not need any transformation and you'll see uh, why in a second. Also, JavaScript is a dynamically typed language, meaning that there is no types. So here you can see, for example, for you to define a variable in JavaScript, you say var and then you give it a name equals to a value. Whereas, for example, in languages such as Java, which is a statically typed language, you have to specify the data type. So have a look here. So int and then h and then here 20. The same with 
uh, this variable so var name amigos code and not string so here so this is the type name amigos code so this is in languages such as java c sharp c plus plus c and others and being a dynamically typed language it makes javascript slower than statically typed languages because as your javascript runs the type is not known until runtime also javascript right here you'll see people referring to javascript as ecmascript and what really ecmascript is is a specification that tells how javascript should be implemented by the web browser right so that your code executes the same in all the browsers but ecmascript does not tell how the javascript should run inside of the browsers this is up to the browsers to decide right so here you see that when you open up the console inside of chrome and then you wrote console.log hello world so that was actually executed by something else if you do the same for firefox that will be executed differently behind the scenes and the way the javascript code is executed is by something called the javascript engine so every browser provides a javascript engine to run your code v8 is the most popular and also used in node.js so v8 is actually um, built by google and it's one of the most popular ones out there so what happens is your javascript code is fed into the engine and then this is responsible for executing your code I'm not going to go too much in detail on how V8 works, so this engine, but I'm going to leave a link where you can learn more about it. And to be honest, this is what I wanted to talk to you about so that you have an understanding of what this language is all about. If you have any questions, please let me know or anything that you're not quite sure, give me a shout. Otherwise, let's move on. Let me touch on ECMAScript so you understand exactly what it is. And I'm going to leave this link under the description of this video so that you can follow along. But ECMAScript or ES is a general purpose programming language standardized by ECMA International according to the document ECMA 262. It is a JavaScript standard meant to ensure that JavaScript code runs the exact same way in all different browsers. Right? So I've mentioned this before. So, the history really of JavaScript right here or ECMAScript um, went all the way back to, I think, 1995 or uh, 1997, which was about 24 years ago as I speak. And you can see all of these different versions right here. So, what you need to understand is that this version right here, so 6 or ES6, was the major update of the language for a very long time and since then you can see that from 2015 all the way to 2021 you can see that there are new versions coming up every now and then right so actually every single year for this course we're going to learn everything there is to know about javascript and by the end of it you'll have a full and complete understanding about this awesome programming language For this course, we're not going to learn JavaScript through our web browser. Instead, we're going to use Visual Studio Code or simply VS Code. So VS Code is the most popular text editor that allows you to write code in pretty much every single language out there, including JavaScript. It's very simple to use. And throughout this course, you're going to learn the basics of VS Code so that you are confident when it comes to write JavaScript. So what I want to do is to download, so navigate to code.visualstudio.com and then right here you can download VS Code for your operating system. So here I'm on a Mac, so you can see that it's already pre-selected. And also you can see that it's free, built on open source and runs everywhere. So go ahead and download VS Code and the installation process is really simple. So here I already have VS Code installed. So if I go to my desktop and I'm going to search for VS Code, 
in here and I've got the insiders as well. So this is a version of VS Code which comes with the latest features. But let me just use Visual Studio Code which will be the exact same one as yours. So let me press enter and there we go. So this is Visual Studio Code. So you should have a screen which looks identical to this. Next, let me go ahead and show you the setup required in order for us to run JavaScript through VS Code. As I said, for this course, we're not going to learn JavaScript through the web browser itself, right? So remember when we did inspect and then inside of the console, so console in here, we're not going to learn JavaScript this way. Instead, what I want you to do is to navigate to nodejs.org and in here you can download Node.js. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome V8 JavaScript engine. Now to cut it short, Node.js allows you to write server-side code using JavaScript. And today is very popular and it's a good choice when building applications. Whether you want to build a full stack application or backend only, you can use JavaScript for the entire stack. Now for this course, we're not going to use Node.js for server-side development and instead we're going to just use it to learn JavaScript. Now what I want you to do is download Node.js according to your operating system. So here you can download the long-term support which is 14 or the current one which is 16 and has the latest feature. So either one will work. And the installation process is really simple. I already have Node.js installed and I'm gonna skip this step. So once you have Node.js installed, what I want to do is let's together create a folder somewhere in your desktop. And in here, I'm going to name this as JavaScript and then dash and then course. And now let's open up VS Code. So VS Code in here. And let's open VS Code in that folder. So here you can navigate to file and then open. Or you can click on open in here. Or if you click on the file explorer in here, you can see open folder. So let me just open folder through here. And inside of my desktop, you can see the JavaScript course folder and then open. And there we go. So now I'm going to create a new file. So here I can say new file from here. Or if you want, you can click on this icon in here, new file. So new file in here. Let's name this as hello dash world dot and then JS. So JS is the extension for JavaScript files. So here I'm going to press enter and there we go. So let me collapse this and also let me close this welcome page in here. And now let's together type console.log. So this is the exact same command that we wrote before, but within VS Code. Here I'm going to say hello and then world and then learning and then JS for JavaScript and then command S for saving or you can go to file and then here you can see save and you can see the keyboard shortcut to save. So in my case, command S, I'm going to save this file. Now in here, you should see that you have the terminal. So here terminal and then click new terminal. There we go. And you can see that this has opened the terminal inside of our folder in here. So if you're on Mac, you can type ls and you can see that we have the hello world.js file. Or if you are on Windows, you can type dir. So dir will give you the exact same thing. So here, let me just clear the screen by just saying clear. And there we go. So now what I want to show you is using node. So in the previous video, we installed node. So here type node and then the name of the file, hello, and then dash world.js. So here, if I press enter, have a look, we have hello world learning JS. So similarly, if I 
in here say console.log and then let's say 10 plus and then 10 in here save this and then if I press the up arrow or I can say node space and then hello world.js clear the screen there run it you can see that we have hello world.js and then 20 so basically 10 plus 10 equals 20 and you can see that we are outputting the result to the debugging console in here using console.log. Now what this means is that you have successfully installed Node.js. So in my case, let me just clear the screen here and I'm going to type node dash dash and then version. So you see the version that I have. So here, this is the version that I have. So for you, this might be completely different, but it doesn't really matter whichever version you have, this should work with all the examples that I'm about to show you. So, so here, let me actually close this because I'm gonna show you a better way of us uh, running this exact same code. But there you have it. If you have any questions, so I'm gonna close by clicking this, or actually uh, I'm gonna kill the terminal, just clicking that trash can. And basically, if you have any questions on getting this far, or if there is anything that you're not sure about, please do let me know. Otherwise, join me in the next video. You've seen this example right here, where we have console.log and then hello world, and also 10 plus 10. What I want to teach you is about comments in JavaScript. There are times where you want to document your code. And to do so, you can use comments. You can use single line or multi-line comments. So in here, if I want to, for example, temporarily comment this line, so I'm just going to add forward slash forward slash. And then here, anything which is present in this line will not be executed. So if I run this code, check this out. Before we had hello world and then 20. But if I run it, you can see that now it's been commented out. So this is a comment. So here, for example, you can comment code, but you can say, for example, here, this code uh, prints the result, for example, right? And I can take this and then put it right here. There we go. And now if I uncomment this and then run it, you can see that we have 20, but here I'm actually documenting what this does. But this is actually pointless because you can tell really that this is 10 plus 10. So this is single line comments. You also have multi-line comments. So multi-line comments allows you to have comments across multiple lines and it goes like this. So you say forward slash and then star and then star again and then forward slash. Now, anything that we put inside here, so in between opening and closing is a comment. So here, this right now, so I'm just writing gibberish right here. So this is a single line comment. But if I press enter, you can see that I can write a multi-line comment. So comments are really useful for you to document your code and just be aware of them for documentation. And also you can use it to temporarily stop a piece of code from executing. For example, here, as I've showed you, if I comment this with a single line comment and also this with a single line comment, if I run this, you can see nothing runs. So this is cool. So now if I want to bring all of this back, I can just select everything and then press command and then forward slash and it uncomments everything. But this has to be common in here. So I've just press command and then forward slash and basically it does the comment for me instead of saying forward slash forward slash. You can just say command or control forward slash if you are on Windows. When writing JavaScript, 
there are many different ways that you will see code being written. And I just want to make you aware of double quotes and semicolon. So when using JavaScript, you see that in here we have console.log and then hello world JS. And then this is between. So here it's between a set of double quotes. So in JavaScript, you can actually decide to use single quotes instead of double quotes, just like that. So this is the exact same thing. And we're going to cover uh, strings later in this course, but I just want to make you aware that using double or single quotes is the exact same thing. Also in here, you see that we have two statements. So line number one, line number two, and there is no semicolon. So semicolon is this. So semicolon in here and semicolon in here as well. But again, this is optional. So JavaScript doesn't really enforces you on semicolons, nor single or double quotes. So if I run this program, you can see that still works. Nothing has changed. This has semicolon. This doesn't. And if I was to print, for example, here, so if I was just to say hello, so let me just say, oh, actually, uh, hola, and then mundo, for example, right? So you can see that this is within double quotes. If I run this, you can see that this still works. Now you can see that now we have some ambiguity, right? So which one shall I choose? Single quotes, double quotes, semicolon, no semicolon. So this is something that you have to decide. But more generally, when you work within a team, the team agrees on a set of standards that you should use. And to help you standardizing your JavaScript code, there is something called ESLint. So here, ESLint, I'm gonna leave this link under the description of this video. Basically, you can fix and find problems in your JavaScript code. So it analyzes your code, so on and so forth. So here, if I navigate to user guide, and then getting started, have a look. So if I scroll down, we can configure, have a look. Rules, they have something called rules, semi, and then error, and then always, right? So here we're saying that we want semicolons. Here, quotes as well. So this is how we tell it to enforce a set of standards that we want. So this is really cool. And you can read more about how to configure this, but at this point, I wouldn't really worry about this too much. Also, if I say uh, rules in here, you can see a bunch of rules that they have. So it's quite huge and you can configure it the way you want it. And also if I click on configuring ESLint, they have um, information about everything that you can do in order to make sure that your JavaScript code is not all over the place. But again, as I said, don't worry about this too much. I just want to show you that you can have semicolons, columns, um, single quotes, double quotes all over the shop. So throughout this course, you'll see sometimes I'm going to use single quotes. Sometimes I'm going to use double quotes. Sometimes I'm going to use semicolon. Sometimes no semicolon. That is absolutely fine. But just make sure that if you are, for example, building a project, stick to one and don't choose double quotes. And then one time you use semicolon and then the other time you use single quotes. Yeah, don't do that. So if you have any questions, drop me a message. Otherwise, catch me on the next one. In this video, let me go ahead and teach you about variables. So what I want to do is for every single video, I'm going to create a file. So here, for example, I'm going to call this as variables.js. And then I'm going to have the actual code in here so that you can have a reference for it. So for every single video, you should have access to the examples that I'm about to teach you. So what exactly is a variable? A variable is simply a placeholder that you can store any value. So in here, the way that you create a variable is by using the var keyword in here. Let's say that we want to store first name. So here I'm going to say first 
and then name and then equals to double quotes and then we can say for example Jamila. Now end this with semicolon just like that. Now here let's use console dot and then log and we're going to log first and then name and that with semicolon and then here if I run this you can see that we have Jamila in here. This is the construct var and then you give it a name and then here you give it a value. So for example, if you want to store age, so age equals two, and then here you can pass a number. So here, let's say 21. And then here, semicolon, and also let's say console.log, and then age. If I end this with semicolon and then run, you can see that we have 21 in here. We can also store, so here, Basically, what you, what you see is we have a sequence of characters, numbers. So here we can also store, so booleans, so var age equals to, and then let's say is, and then female equals to true. So here we can store true or false. So here, if I say console.log and then age, and then is female and this with semicolon and then run this you can see that we have true if you want false you just say false and then run it you can see that we have false but obviously Jamila that's a female so here if I control Z and then run it again you can see that we have true so also let me show you that we can store for example here var and then balance let's name this as balance equals to and then let's say that I've got like 100 pounds point 33 or 32 cents so save this and I can also say console.log and then balance just like that and then run it and you can see that we have the result in here we can also store dates so here let's just say var and then dob equals to and for dates say new and then capital D and then date and inside we can pass the year so let's say that 2000 and the month starts from zero so January will be zero February will be two so on and so forth so it's from zero to eleven so here let's just say January and then here we can say the day so let's say 30th of January and if I end this with semicolon and let me also log so console.log and then dob just like that and then run this you can see that we have the date so here 2000 this is the month and then here this is the day right here so you can see that even though we said zero in here so zero represents january as i said in here so if I was to change this to one, so this would be February. So run this. So this is saying three because in February we only have 28 or 29 days. So here, if I was, for example, to say 20 and then eight. So I don't know whether 2000 was a leap year or not. So here, let me just run it. And you can see that fair enough. So now we have uh, basically February in here. And also we can have objects so here let me just say var and then person let's just name this as person and we're going to come back to this later but for now just have these two uh, curly brackets in here so this is what we call it and also var and then empty equals to undefined so this means that a variable is empty so if I console.log so console.log so let's just say person and also empty there we go and if i run this code you can see that we have the empty object and undefined so this is how you work with variables with javascript so you saw how to create variables now in here have a look jamila this is a sequence of characters here we have a number here we have true or false we have a number we have a date 
we have an object and here we have undefined now what all of these are these are data types so these are data types so unlike for example la languages such as java for example you would say for example string in here so string is a sequence of characters now in javascript you just say var and then the type is inferred for you so what i want to show you is where we are saying console.log let's together here let me just put this a little bit smaller in here and what we're going to do is let's just say type of in here and basically add a space in here and basically do the same for the rest so here i'm just gonna select all of those so i'm just pressing command and then d and then type of and then here i want to know the type of all of these variables so if i now run this you can see that have a look so we have a string in here so this is for this first variable this is a number in here so number then we have a boolean we have a number so the number is for the balance so the date as well so this is an object and more on objects later again here we have an object and then here for undefined we have undefined so this is the actual type so just remember when working with javascript you can have different data types in your variables let me go ahead and teach you how to name your variables when working with JavaScript, variable names cannot contain spaces. They must begin with and can only contain letters, numbers, underscore, or dollar signs. Now, most of the times you're not going to be using, for example, numbers, underscores, and dollar signs in your variables. You should stick just to letters, but so that you know you can use them. Also, they are case sensitive. And also you cannot use reserve keywords. So what I mean with reserve keywords is, for example, in here, if I was to name this variable as const, for example, this will give me an error because const is a reserve keyword. Same with new right here. So new is a reserve keyword. If I was to say, for example, case, case is a reserve keyword you can see that it's giving me an error and i can also say catch for example so catch it's a reserve keyword so catch and a bunch of other reserve keywords that you're going to learn with javascript so also if you have a variable that you have to name using two or more words for example in this case first name you should use camel case camel case means that the first word is lowercase and then the beginning of the second word so the first letter starts with uppercase so here if i was for example to say first name and then for jamila i would say four with capital f and then jamila capital j another way that you could do this is you could say first underscore and then name so this is using underscore right here so it really depends on the standard that you decide to adopt but most people stick with this approach right here and to be honest this is it so just make sure that when you name your variables they have a meaning right so for example here you see that i've said h for example and it's 21 so you wouldn't say for example blah right so blah for example Right, so this doesn't mean anything or hello for example it doesn't mean anything right so the variable has to have a meaning and it must resemble the value that you have in here on the right hand side so after the equals for booleans in here so for booleans you should stick with something like this so for example is and then female so you're just asking a question is it female and here i'm saying true right so I could also say, for example, is teenager, for example, or is raining. So I could say var is and then raining, for example, equals to and then true. Right. 
So you should never say, for example, is not raining, for example, because uh, you'll learn later how we can flip the values of booleans. And to be honest, you can see that it's not that difficult. So here you see that we have a balance. So this is representing a balance, DOB for date of birth. And then here, person, and this is an object. So currently it's an empty object, but you get the gist. If you have any questions on naming variables, go ahead and drop me a message. Otherwise, let's move on. Let me teach you about strings in JavaScript. A string is a data type that allows you to store a sequence of characters. So here, for example, if you want to store brand, so here brand equals two, and then here I can say amigos and then code. You can see that this is a sequence of characters. So this is really cool. Now this data type is called string as you've seen before. So if I console.log and then brand, or in fact type of and then brand, if I run this, this is a string right here. Now the cool thing with strings is that we have a bunch of methods available to us. So here, let's say that you want to uppercase everything within this string. I can say brand dot, and then inside I have a bunch of methods. So if I want to know the length, for example, I can just say length. So here, let's just run this and you'll see that it's 10. So there are 10 characters in it. So what I wanted to do actually was to, so console dot log, and I can also use brand dot and then two and then uppercase. Now this is a function, so we have to invoke it with parentheses right here. And if I run this, have a look. Everything now is in uppercase right here, amigos code. So also you can basically, let's just say console dot log and inside I can say brand and then if I say dot, I can also say substring, for example. So this is a method. So here it takes the start and the end as a, a number. So let's say zero, two, and then a six. So if I run this, check what's gonna happen. So amigos, I only have amigos. So you can see that strings are really powerful and you're gonna use them quite a lot in JavaScript. If you're in a store, for example, you know, first name, last name, or address, or an email, pretty much any text, you can do it with strings. Also, you can concatenate strings together. So here, if I have, uh, for example, var, and then I'm going to say amigos, or actually, let me just say a equals to, and then amigos. And then also here I've got var and then b equals to and then code. Now, if I want to concatenate these two strings together, I can say console.log and then I can say a plus and then b. It's as simple as that. So you can see that this works with numbers. So this performs addition when it sees numbers, but when it sees strings, it pretty much just joins them together. So if I run this, you can see that we have amigos code in here. So everything was joined. If you wanted to, for example, add a space, you would say something like that. So space and then plus and then run this again. You can see that now I do have a space in here. So this is one way of joining strings. There is another way, which is as follows. I can say console.log and then here I'm going to have back ticks. So back ticks, and then I'm going to have dollar sign and then curly brackets and then pass a and then the same here. So I'm going to say dollar sign and then curly brackets and then pass B. So you can see that here we're not actually using pluses, but instead we are using back ticks and then we can have dollar sign and then enclosed with these curly brackets and then pass whatever value that we want. So if I run this, you can see that we have amigos code. And the cool thing here is I can add spaces. For example, you can see here, and I don't have to say plus and then uh, spaces. Now, the cool thing here also is that with this expression, I can say here dot and then two 
and then uppercase. So I'm only uppercasing B. So B is code. So if I run this, have a look. So I only uppercased code in here. So in here, you can actually do anything with these variables, right? So if you want to add numbers, you could add numbers. If you want to call methods within a string, you can do it, right? So let me just leave it like that. And there we go. So basically, this is how you go about working with strings. And if you want to learn about all the methods available, just navigate to this website in here, the JavaScript reference, which I'm going to leave a link under the description of this video. But basically here, uh, we can learn about strings. So here, uh, if I search for strings, so let me see a string. There we go. Text processing. So string, and then it gives you some detail about strings. So this is a different way of creating a string in here, but in here. So if I scroll down, oh, actually not even down, but basically uh, in here on the left hand side, you can see all the methods, right? So charat, um, I think you saw, what was it? Two uppercase or two lowercase here. Have a look, two lowercase, two uppercase, trim, value of, so on and so forth. So go ahead and explore the methods available. And I think if you scroll down, they have also explanation about them right here. So go ahead and explore these methods, but strings is something that you're going to be using quite a lot when writing JavaScript code. Let's go ahead and learn about objects with JavaScript. So when you use JavaScript, you're going to be using objects quite a lot and it's very simple to use. So an object is a collection of properties. So here, let me just remove this in here. And also let me just remove this empty in here. So in here, have a look, we have this person variable in here. And this is an object. So this is an empty object. But as I said, an object is a collection of properties. So each property has a value. So here we could represent a person as an object. So we can take the first name. So we can say first name. So this is a property key. And then the value, let's just say that this is Jamila. Now note that you need to have this column in here. So key and then value. So here, let's add a comma and add a second one. And we're going to say age column and then 21. Let's also say is and then female. And then here I'm going to say column and then true. Let's also take the balance, for example. So balance and this was 100.32. And we can also take DOB, so DOB, colon, and then here, I'm going to say new date in here. And in order for us to use this date inside of an object, I need to say dot, and then two, and then JSON, just like that. And I'm going to explain more about this later, so what this means. But basically, this allows me to use a date inside of an object. And now you can see that instead of us having individual variables, we can delete all of this and have one single variable where the type is an object. And here we have key and then value, right? So this is the key value, key value, key value, and the same. So this is a data type. You can have as many data types as you want. What's cool about objects is that you can also have nested objects. So here, if I say address, for example, so column, and then if I want another object, I can just say these curly brackets. And here I could say, for example, city. And let's say, for example, this is London. And here, let's just say postcode, colon, and then the postcode is SW9, for example. So you can see that we have a nested object. Now let's learn how to access the values inside of an object. So here I can say console dot and then log and then person. And if I run this, I just want you to see that we have the object itself in here, right? So this is our object. 
Now, if I want to access an individual object, I can say dot. And then here, have a look, we have access to all the properties. So I can only have access to the first name if I want, for example, you just say dot and then first name. If I run this, you can see that we only have Jamila. So if I want to duplicate this, just like that, and let me add semicolon in here. And here, if I want to, for example, get age, I can just say age. And if I want to have the balance, for example, I can just say balance, run this, and you can see that we have the output. If you also want to access nested objects, you can just say console.log, and then inside you say person, so this is the object variable, dot, and then address. Now, if I run this, have a look, we have address and this is an object. Now, if you want to access, for example, only city, you can say dot and then city. So you can see how we can access each individual property inside of objects and nested objects. If I run this, have a look, we have London in here. So basically this is objects in a nutshell. Also, let me show you another function in here. So console.log and more on functions. But here, let's just say together object. So capital O and then dot. And then here you can say values. And here, let me just add parentheses and then pass person. So what this will give me, it will give me the list of all values for this object in here, you can see that this is an array and more on arrays later. If you want the keys, I can just duplicate this line. And here, instead of say values, I can say keys and then run this. Have a look. First name, age is female balance, DOB and address. If you want a string representation of an object, I can say console.log. And then here I can say json dot and then stringify and then here i can just pass my object person and then run this and here you can see the output and basically this is now a string so the type of it is a string this is pretty much objects in javascript you can see that they are very simple to use and you're going to use them quite a lot when writing javascript code it's all for now Catch me on the next one. You saw the Boolean data type, which is either true or false. So in here, let me just have this variable. So var and then is and then adult in here. And I'm going to say true. So a Boolean represents true or false. So the possible values are either true or false. So here, if I just say true, for example, and if I console dot log, and then is and then adult. So this will give me true in here. And you'll see exactly how to use booleans later with uh, loops and conditioning with if statements. But I just want to show you that the possible values are true or false. So here, if I say false, you can see that this is very simple. So it prints out false in here. Now, what I want to show you quickly is in here. So let me just say if, and you're going to learn about if later, but here you just say if, and then is, and then adult, and basically have a parentheses. So opening and then closing, and then curly brackets. And here, let's just say console.log, and then is and then adult. And in here, let's just say else. And then I'm going to take this, paste it, and then say is not an adult. And then just pull like a, a sad face, for example, and then a happy face in here. So in here, if I run this, you can see that we have so let me just remove this first log. So here we have false and then is not an adult. So basically we've used this Boolean 
inside of this if statement this evaluated to false and then this code right here was executed if i change this to true have a look is adult so basically if true execute this right here now one last thing that i want to show you quickly is with booleans we can actually flip the values so here if i say for example console.log and then i'm going to say true in here and if i run this you can see that we have true but i can flip the value by having the exclamation mark and this will be false so i'm just flipping the values have a look false so if i duplicate this and here if i say false and then run this you can see that false became true and true became false so similarly in here so is adult equal to true so here i can say if it's not adult i can flip these values so i can take this and then put it here and i can take this and i'm just flipping the logic and then just put it like that so you can see that if it's not adult so if it's false execute this otherwise execute is adult so if i run this you can see that it says is adult in here and that's because this was false and this is because is adult so this variable right here is true right but here i'm saying if it's not an adult but indeed it is an adult therefore execute this line in here so you'll see how to use them more later down in this course but i just wanted to show you how to work with the boolean data type let's learn about arrays so you saw that with the variable we can only store one single value so you saw that for example we had before var and then first and then name equals to let's say this is equals to alex for example so this variable here called first name can only have one value in it now let's say that you want to have a variable that has multiple values so this is what arrays are used for so here i'm going to say var and then i'm going to name this as names equals to and then here use square brackets now inside i can have as many values as i want so here let's just say alex so here alex comma we can have jamila for example and comma we can have joe comma we can have aisha for example so you can see the difference here right so we have so if i put this like that so here we have this variable and it has a bunch of items in it whereas a single variable can only have one single value so if i wanted to store jamila for example i couldn't store jamila in it so if i was to do this if i was to say comma and then jamila so this value for this variable is basically this whole string so let me delete this line in here and what i want to show you is how do we work with arrays so here let me actually put this like that and you can do so as well so just like that and this is mainly for visibility so when working with arrays you need to understand that this is an item this is an item another item and another item now if you want to grab this very first item it's as follows so here i'm going to say console.log so if i just log names for now here and then run this you can see that we have the array right itself but if i want to basically grab the first item i can just basically duplicate this line and in here i say names and then square brackets and then the index 
Now the index starts from zero. So this is index zero, index one, two, and three. So even though there are four items in it, the index starts from zero. So if I was to say zero in here, and then duplicate this line a couple of times, say one, two, and then three, run this, you can see that here, we have zero, one, two, and three. And I could even say, so here, so not there, but here. So here I can say double quotes and then index and then zero dash space and then plus. So I think this is much neater. Take that and then say plus here, the same here, plus, and the same there, plus, and this is index one, two, and then three. Run this, have a look, index zero, Alex, index one, Jamila, index two, Joe, three, and then Aisha. So if you were to, for example, so here, if I was to access the index four, so here, index four, run this, you can see that the result of this is undefined. And this is because the array only has four items in it. So this corresponds to the fifth item and it doesn't exist. And finally, if you want to know the number of items inside of this array, you can just say console dot and then log. And here I'm going to concatenate two strings together. So here I'm going to say size equals to and then plus and then names dot and then length just like that and that with semicolon run it and you can see that the size is indeed four one two three four but as i said the index starts from zero this is a race more on it later when we touch on loops but if you have any questions, drop me a message. Otherwise, join me in the next one. Let me go ahead and teach you how to perform arithmetic operations with JavaScript. So in here, if we want to add two numbers, we can say var. So var, and then here I'm going to call this addition equals two. And then let's say that you want to add two numbers. I can say two, for example plus and then two. There we go. And this with semicolon. If I want to subtract, I can say minus in here. And here I can say subtraction. There we go. If I want to divide two numbers together, I can say division. And by the way, this is just a variable, right? So here, let's just say 10, for example. And then I can say 10 divided by two in here. And also, if you want to do multiplication, we can just say 10 and then times 2. And let me change the uh, variable name. So here, multiplication. And finally, we have the remainder. So you're going to be using this as well. So re remainder. And basically, is using this percent sign in here, right? So this is saying 10 divided by 2, what is left? So in this case, it's zero. So let me actually log all of these so you can see the output. So console.log, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, and finally, remainder. So now if I run this, have a look. So two plus two is four, two minus two is zero, 10 divided by two is five, multiplication, 10 times two is 20, 10 divided by 2 is 5, the remainder is 0. So if I was to say, for example, 10 and then remainder and then 9. So how many times 3 goes into 10? So 3 goes into 10 3 times, and what is left out is 1. So if I run this, have a look, 1. So here, again, if I say, for example, 4, how many times 4? goes into 10. Two times the remainder is eight. So, well actually two, my bad, right? So four times two is eight, and then two more numbers to 10. 
So here, if I was to say, for example, seven, seven goes into 10 one time, and the remainder is three. So hopefully this makes sense. So here you can see that we have two numbers, but here, if you want to have more than two numbers, you can absolutely do it. So here, for example, I could say plus and then one. If I run this, you can see that 10 times two is 20 plus one equals 21. Then I could say times and then zero, for example. And if I run this, you can see that this is 20. So basically one times zero is zero and then two times two 20 plus zero is 20. But also you could actually uh, enforce. So here you could wrap these with parentheses right here, just like that. So basically this is Bodmus in action. So body, division, multiplication, addition and subtraction. Two plus one is three and then 10 times three is 30. 30 times zero, have a look it's zero. So you can see by just changing with parentheses, we actually changed the result. So this actually works for any arithmetic operator that you have within JavaScript. And I almost forgot, we also have the exponent. So exponent operator. And basically here, so I can say, for example, three, and then times so basically just say times two times right here. And then here I can say, for example, four. Now what this is equivalent to, so this is the same as saying three times three times three times three, which is 81. So basically if you've done some maths, you have the power. So this is the exact same thing. So here, if I duplicate this line and then say exponential, and then run it, you can see that we have 81. If I was to change this, for example, to one, so three times one is three. If I change this to two, this would be nine. If I change this to three, it's 27, and it goes like that. This is all for this video. Catch me in the next one. Let's learn about functions in JavaScript. A function is a set of statements that perform a task or calculates a value. So when building applications, you're gonna be writing lots and lots of functions. So in here, let's write a function that takes two numbers and then returns the addition of those two numbers. So you've seen that before, we had a variable called addition equals to two plus and then two. And there we go. So now if I basically log, so console.log and then addition, you can see that. So if I run this, the output is four. Now, what I want to do is to have a function that I can pass any numbers. So here, for example, if I change this to five, you can see that I get seven in there. But really what I want to, to do is to have a function that can take any two, any numbers, and then I can reuse that function again and again and again. So in here to create a function in JavaScript is as follows. You say function and then you give it a name. So add, and then let's say numbers and then add parentheses followed by two curly brackets and inside. So in here, Let's just take, so we're going to take all of this and then cut that and then put it inside. So now if I want to call this function in here, I can just say add and then numbers. And then by just doing this, nothing happens. But if I add these two parentheses, it means that I'm calling the function. I'm telling the function to run. So if I run this code, you can see that we have seven in here. So have a look. So if I change this to 10, for example, you can see that we have 12. And now I can take this function and then I can duplicate the function just like that. And here, if I run it again, we should have 12 twice because I'm calling the function two times. Now, what I really want is for this function to take two numbers.
So how do we do that? So here you can see that we have these two numbers, two and 10, but currently they are fixed numbers. So what I can do is I can say number and then one and then number two. Now this here, it's called a parameter. So this is parameter number one and parameter number two. And now I can do this. I can just say number one plus and then number and then two. So if I run this, you can see that we have N A N, which means not a number. And this is because this function now expects two arguments. So the argument is the value that goes into it. So here I could say 10 and then 10, right? So this is number one, this is number two. So here I could also say seven and then comma and then three, for example, right? So if I run this, have a look, 10 plus 10 is 20, seven plus three is, is 10. So this is the parameter and you can have zero or more parameters as you saw and the values that go into it are called arguments. Now, what I would like to do with this function is instead of printing the result in here, instead of saying, instead of saying console.log, what I want to do is return and then addition in here. I can just return addition. Now, if I run this function, have a look, we have no output. And this is because right now we're just calling the function here. The function is returning a result, but we are not doing anything with the result. So here I can save this to a variable. So I can say result and then one equals two and then add numbers. I could also say result and then two and there we go. And finally we can say console.log and then result one and if I duplicate this result to run this and have a look, this now is working. So this is really cool. So a function is a set of statements. So here we have a set of statements right here that performs a task or calculates a value basically. So everything that you're going to be doing with JavaScript will involve around functions. So you've seen these are the parameters. So number one, number two, you can have zero or more. And then what goes inside are called arguments. You can store the results into variables, provided that you return something in here, right? So a function may or may not return a value. So this is all for functions. If you have any questions, drop me a message. Otherwise, catch me in the next one. When using JavaScript, you will realize that there are already lots of built-in functions available for you. So you saw that before we had this object. So let's just say here var and then person equals two. And then this is an object. And here, let's just have name. And then here, I'm going to say Jamila, for example. So here, if I say console.log and then object dot and then values. So have a look. So this basically, uh, you can see that it says a method there. And here I can pass the actual object. So I can say person here. And this right here, so this is a function. So object of values is a function that prints the values for any object. If I run this, you can see that we have Jamila in here. So similarly, if I was to duplicate this and then instead of values, say keys in here, so keys, and then run it again, you can see that we have name. So the key is name and the value is uh, Jamila. And you can see that this is actually given me an array. You can see this is an array. So similarly, let's say that you want to, so let me just show you something quickly. So console.log here. 
So let's say that I do have Jamila. So this is a string. So here, if I press dot, so have a look. I've got a bunch of functions in here. So I can say, for example, so have a look, to lowercase, to uppercase. So if I choose that, so here I need to invoke the function. So this will take every single character and uppercase this string. So if I run this, have a look. So Jamila in uppercase. So if I want to have lowercase, I can say to and then lower case right here and run this. And you can see that now it's all lowercase. So all of these are built in methods. So also, let me just show you another one. Oops, I didn't mean to run that, but I meant to duplicate this. So here I can say, so here I can say dot, and then I can say, have a look, there's a bunch of things here. So you can trim, so on and so forth. You can replace, you can search. So in here, you can concat, for example. So index of, for example, what's the index of I? So here I'm going to pass I as a string. So I, and if I run this, so let me just add semicolons there for everything. And if I run this, you can see that the index for I is three. So zero, one, two, and then three in here. So I'm just showing you that when learning JavaScript, you need to be aware of all of these functions that it has to offer you. So built in functions. And the best way to learn all of this is if you go to the JavaScript reference. So in here, you can find the reference for JavaScript. And you can pretty much learn about all the functions and value properties that JavaScript has to offer. So here, have a look, object fundamentals. So if I click on objects, for example, in here, have a look, static methods, assign entries in here. So the one you saw was, have a look, keys. So if I zoom in a little bit, so keys returns an array containing the names of all given object on enumerable string properties. So you can see that basically it's all about you learning about all of these methods. And you can see the list of methods on the left in here. So methods, and then you can read all of these methods. So similar, so if I go back here for a second, and in here, let me just choose, for example, let's say Boolean right here. Have a look at the methods. You can see the methods, so length, name, or actually, sorry, apply, bind, so on and so forth. And you can see the properties, but let me just go to, for example, string, so text processing. So string, have a look. So properties, so length, you've got the methods here. So char at, concat, fixed. So the one you saw, um, it should be somewhere here, but you can repeat, replace, search, uh, strike, and you can basically click on, and you can see here, for example, two lowercase, right? So if I click on it, you can see that it gives you an example um, of what this method does. But basically, what I would say is for you to be aware of this page, if you want to learn how to use strings and all of the functions and methods available to it, you can refer to this page right here and just read the documentation. That's what I would say, read the documentation. And that's really what we software engineers do, right? So when learning something new, we always learn through reading documentation. So here you can see, for example, built-in objects, array, date, so on and so forth. So this is all for functions. If you have any questions, drop me a message. Otherwise, let's move on. Let's go ahead and learn about loops with JavaScript. So a loop allows you to execute a piece of code over and over again until a condition is reached. Let's say that we want to print the numbers from zero all the way to 10. So here you could say, for example, um, here, console.log. So here you could say, for example, one, 
And then here, if I duplicate this, you could say two and then three. And you can see that it's already, you know, very tedious, right? So four, five, six, and seven. And if I say print from zero to 100, and I actually missed zero here, but you get the gist, right? So this is not feasible. So with loops, we can automate all of this. So in here, let's learn how to create a loop that will print the numbers from zero to 100. So here, go ahead and say four. So this is the construct. And here, I'm going to say four var. And then I, so this is basically the variable name. And usually when you use this type of loops, you say I equals. So this is a starting point zero, and then comma, and then semicolon. And in here, I'm going to say while I is less or equal, let's say less or equal to 10. I want to keep on doing the same thing. And here, I'm going to say how do I increment this initial value right here. So I, so I'm going to say I and then plus plus. So I plus plus means I and then add one for each iteration. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So here then have the squarely brackets and there we go. So now here, what I want to do is I want to say console dot log and then the value of I semicolon. And then if I run this, have a look, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and basically, if I say 100, it will basically print the numbers from 0 to 100. And you can see that this is much uh, efficient instead of a saying console.log 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is the gist of loops. So before, remember, we had this array in here, so names. And what I want to do is I want to loop through this array and then print every single value. So how do we do it with this loop? Well, in here, we know that the index starts at zero. So this will be zero. And then here, I, I want to continue loop through this array while, so here I can say names dot and then length, I can get the length. Right, so while i is less or equal to the names dot length, I want to keep on looping. Then here I'm going to say names, and then remember how to access the index, and then here I'm going to pass i. So i initially will be zero, and then one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. So if I run this, we have Alex, Jamila, Joe and Aisha. And also you see that we have undefined. And this is because I told it to loop while I is less or equal to the length, right? So what I really want is uh, less in here. So if I run this, you can see that now I only have uh, these four items. So here, if I was to add a second item, so here, let's say Bob, and then run it, you can see that automatically Bob will be included. So this is the cool thing about loops. Next, let me go ahead and show you another loop construct. Another way that we can loop with JavaScript is using the following construct. So in here, you can see that this construct can be a little bit confusing and you saw that I had to say less or equal, and I even got it wrong, right? So usually you're not gonna be using this loop that often when looping, for example, through a race. And the one that you're gonna be using most of the times is this one. So here, let me just say console.log, and then here, I'm just gonna leave it empty. And here, let's go ahead and say, so how do we loop through this? So here we can say, four and have a look. So here is actually, so here my, so here VS code is telling us the types of loops. 
So here you saw four. So this is the for loop. So this is this construct in here. And then we have four. I've just pressed control and then space. And then we have for each, for in, and then for of. So here, let's go ahead and say for and then in. So you see, what does it look like? So you can see, so this is a little bit different. So for, and here it says const. You're going to learn about const later. But here, if I basically go back, so I want to show you that we have this other way that we can loop in arrays. So here I can say for and then of. So here for of and don't worry about the const for now. So here for n for name. So this is actually let's just name this as name of and then names. And then here I can take console.log. So console.log and then name. And that would semicolon run this. And you can see that we have the exact same output. And this loop is much more neat. So this is the for and then of. We can also use for each. So here, let me just name this as for and then of. And this was for and then I. And you can grab all of this from the description of this video. So for and then I. So here. And here. Let's just paste that and here we can say for and then each. So the for each is a little bit different and that is we say names dot and then for each and the for each takes a function and this is a callback and, and you're going to learn about callbacks later. So the function takes a name and then here what we want to do is just say console dot and then log and then name just like that. This name is this one. So if I run this, have a look and I need some spaces. So let me just say console dot log in between just like that. There we go. And then run it again. And this is much better. So you can see. So for I, so this is the loop for and then of and then for each. I would say, for example, if you want to learn about all these different ways, or if you're not quite sure, you can just use auto completion. So just say for and have a look for each, for each in here, for in, for of. And this is the traditional for loop in here, right? So there you have it. This is how you use loops with JavaScript. So loops are mainly used when you have arrays and objects, and they're really convenient for you to execute a piece of code until a certain condition is met. This is all for now. Catch me on the next one. Another loop construct that I want to teach you is the while loop. So while loop is a loop that loops until a certain condition is false. So it goes like this. So here, let's just say while and then here. So this here takes a Boolean. So true or false. So here, if I say true, for example, and then say console.log and then say hello. So this will actually log forever because this is always true. So if I was to run this, you can see that this is actually looping forever. So here, let me just say false quickly. And basically, if I run this, ah, you can see that the code is still running. So let me actually stop this. There we go. And now if I say while well, false, and then hello, run this, you can see that this will never run. So we can do something like this. So here I can say var and then I can say i equals to zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say while and then i or let's just name this as number. So while number 
is less. We're going to learn about this sign in a second, but here I'm saying while the number is less than five, in here, I want to log the number. So I'm gonna log the number, but still if I run this code, it will also run forever. So here, if I run this, have a look. This is actually running forever. Have a look, it's running forever. So let me actually stop this. And basically what I want to do is I want to increment this number here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say number. So I'm going to say number equals to the current number plus and then one. So now if I run this, have a look, zero, one, two, three, four. So this is a while loop in action. So it loops while this condition here is true. If it's false, then it exits the loop. You could also do something like this. So here, I'm gonna say var, and I'm gonna change this to condition. So condition equals to true. And here, I'm gonna pass condition. And basically, what I wanna do is, I just want to log, hello, let's just say hello in here. So hello, and right after printing hello, if I don't if I don't set this condition to false, it will just carry on. So I'm gonna say condition equals to false. So initially, it's true, this will print, and then the condition will be false, and then it will exit out of this loop. If I run this, you can see that we have hello in here, and then it exits. Now, I could also use the while loop to basically loop and get all the elements in here. So the way we do it is the following. So here, I'm going to say var index equals to zero, so that's the initial index. And then here, I'm going to say, so let me just, in here, I'm gonna say, while the index, so index is less than names dot and then length. So while this is the case, I want to say console.log and then here I want to take names and then pass the index. And what I wanna do is I wanna increment index. So I'm gonna say index equals to the current value of index plus and then one. Semicolon there. If I run this, have a look. So here we are printing all the elements inside of this array. And it's very similar to the way that we've done with for loops, but using while loops. So just remember in here, while loops, loops while a condition is true, otherwise it just exits. Next, let me teach you about the do while loop. Still working with while loops, there is yet another construct, and that is this one. So instead of saying while, we can say, so here, let me just remove all of this. So here, I'm gonna remove that. And here we can say do, and then while. So this is the construct, and here again, so this takes a Boolean, true or false. Now the difference between do while and while is that this second one here, so do while, will always execute a piece of code at least once. Will always execute the piece of code inside of this block in here, right? So here, for example, if I say false, and then here if I say print, or actually uh, console.log, so this is what happens when you know too many programming languages. And then here I wanna say hello, right? So for example, so if I run this, so let me just remove this in here. So if I run this, have a look, we always have hello in here, right? It will always execute no matter what, even though this is false. Now, if this is true, this will execute forever. So the first time around, it comes into this block. I'm going to log because it always 
does whatever is inside of this block at least once and then looking at this so while true so this is basically forever and is going to come back and then basically do this one here again and again and again so if i run this you can see that we have hello forever right here so let me just stop this and there we go so use while loops when you want to do something at least once Let me teach you about break and continue keywords. So the break and continue keywords can only be used within loops, either within for loops or while loops. So to demonstrate the break keyword first is as follows. So let's say that in here, you see that this piece of code prints the numbers from zero to and then 10. Now the break keyword pretty much breaks out of the loop. So here, if I, let me just use this statement here. So if, and you haven't learned about if statements and you're going to learn about it in a second. So here I'm gonna say if, and then I, and then say equals two, and then let's say five. So if it's equal to five, I want to break. But before it, what I want to do is I want to say console.log and then I. So I is the number, right? So here, if I run this, you can see that I'm printing the numbers from zero all the way to five. As soon as the number is equals to five, it sees this statement and it says, oh, I need to break. So have a look. If I comment this line just like that, and then run it, you can see that it prints from zero to 10. But if I put it back, as soon as it reaches five, it breaks out of the loop. The continue keyword is a little bit different. So let me show you how it works. So here, let me take this console.log in here. And what I wanna do is, I want to say if the number here is less then five, I want to continue. And here, let me just say console.log and then I. So what this will do is the following. So the first time it comes around, it says I, is I less than five? So is one less than five? Yes, go back, don't even execute. So it means don't carry on executing line six downwards. So continue just goes back. Again, continue, goes back, and then basically it tries to execute again. So it means that if I run this, have a look. I only have the numbers five all the way to 10 because zero, one, two, three, and four are less than five. Therefore, I told it not to execute this line and then just go back and then start the next iteration. You can use break and continue with while loops as well, as you've seen in the previous video, how to work with while loops, but it's the exact same concept. So if you have any questions on break and continue, drop me a message, otherwise let's move on. Let me go ahead and teach you about the increment and decrement operator. So throughout this course, you've seen that I've used plus plus and if you don't recall correctly it was when we used loops so here so this was the example so var and then i and then less or equal and then i plus plus so let me teach you what exactly is this i plus plus so when we say plus plus this means increment so we can use it as follows so here let me say console dot log and then if I say number here, so if I say number plus plus, now what this means, it means that it will increment number and return the value before incrementing. So if I was to run this as it stands, so I want you to try and guess what the result will be. So here we have zero, and then I'm saying number plus plus, and I said that this 
increments and returns the value before incrementing. So increments number returns the value before incrementing. So if I run this, have a look. So this is zero. So this is zero because it increments the value number and returns the current value before incrementing it. So that means if I say console.log, so if I duplicate this line and then just log number, so this will be one. Have a look, one. So this is called postfix. So here, post and then fix increment. We also have prefix. So here with prefix, so prefix, so prefix works as follow. So here, if I say, for example, var and then number and then two equals two and then zero. So here, if I say console.log and then number two, so prefix is plus plus and then the actual variable. Now, what this does, it increments and returns the value after incrementing it, which means that if I run this here, the result will be one. Have a look, one in here. So hopefully this makes sense. So here you see that we have plus plus, but we can also say minus minus. So for example, in here, so let's say here, console.log and then number. Here I can say minus minus, this is, is the same thing. And let me just duplicate this like that. And if I say console.log and then just a number, let's see. So here we start at zero, we say number plus plus. So here it returns the current number and then increments. So this will be zero, one, the current number is one here. And then here it will print one, right? Because the current value is one and then it will decrement the number. And then here we're gonna go back to zero. So here, if I run this, have a look, zero, one, one, and then zero. So this is what I've just said. So the same with prefix. So here, if I say console.log, and in fact, let me just do that. And here, if I say minus minus, so this increments and returns the increments and returns the number. So this will be one. And then here, decrements and returns the number, this will be zero. If I run it, you can see one and zero. So the example that you saw before was this loop right here. So var i and then here i plus plus. So it means that i starts at zero and then i plus plus. So here this will be so i plus plus it means that return the value of i and then increment in the next iteration. So this is why you see zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as you saw before. So there we have it. So actually, let me just run this. So you see, so let me actually have some logs. So here, let me just say console.log postfix. Let me take this and then say prefix. And then here, let me just say for loop. So for and then loop. And there we go. Now, if I go ahead and run this, you can see the results. This is all for now. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop your message. Otherwise, let's move on. Let us learn about the comparison operators that JavaScript has to offer. So the comparison operators, they compare values and return true or false. So in here, you've seen that when we've used while loop, we passed a Boolean, right? So Boolean, so a Boolean is either true or false, right? So Boolean, 
So let me just type here. So Boolean is either true or false. So these comparison operators, they evaluate an expression and return true or false. Now here are the operators. So you've got, you've got less, less or equal, greater, greater or equal, equal, and not equals. So let me go ahead and show you how to use them. So in here, let's just simply have a console.log. And let's say that we want to compare whether 10 is equal to 10. So here, if I run this, this is true, right? So 10 equals to 10. So I could also, so let me duplicate this, say that is it 10 less than 10? And if I run this, you can see that it is false, right? So the return is either a Boolean, true or false. So if I take this and say, is it 10 less or equal to 10? This will be true, right? Because 10 is less or equal. Have a look, true. If I duplicate this once more, I can say the opposite now. So I can say greater, duplicate this, greater or equal. And let me take this a step further. And if I run this, you can see that we have false and then true. And we can also say that is 10 not equal. So here, let me just take this and then just put it here. So it makes more sense. So 10 equal, and we can say also 10 not equal to 10. So if I run this, you can see that it is true, right? So 10 is not equal to 10. And you can see that this is false in here, right? So 10 is actually equal to 10. So these are the comparison operators. So here, for example, when you used the while loop, you can pass an expression, for example, if you wanted to, right? So I think we've done i less than 10, for example, right? So this would have evaluated to true or false. And remember with the while loop, it keeps looping while this condition is true. So there we have it. This is about the comparison operators that JavaScript has to offer. So we're going to use them later with if statements and you'll see more of them in action. So here you see that I'm using numbers, but you could also say, for example, console.log. And here I could say, so is it A equals two and then A, right? Or actually B. Is a equal to b so you see that this is actually strings so these comparison operators they work with numbers strings and objects so if i run this you can see that it's false right so a is not equal to b so if i say a not equal to b or let me just duplicate this and then say a not equal so not equal to b so that is true have a look so there we have it. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know. But we're going to come back to these operators when we use if statements. You've learned about comparison operators. Now let me teach you about logical operators. So in here, so this is part of the previous example. So what logical operators allows us to do is to connect two or more expressions. So here, if I basically, let's just get rid of this for a second. We can get rid of this. So here, let's say that you want to say 10 equals to 10, but you also want to say and, and then 90, for example, or let's just say A equals to B, right? Or let's just say A, for example. So you can see that we are using the logical operator. So it allows us to connect two or more expressions. So if I run this, have a look, this is true. So and means that everything has to be true. So this expression has to be true and this expression has to be true. So if I duplicate this and let me just say here, for example, B, right? So this would actually evaluate to false because A, it's not equal to B, but here I'm saying A equals to B. 
if I run this, this is false. Now, if you want just one of them, you can just say or. So here, or. So or means you can have as many expressions inside, but at least one has to be true for the overall expression to evaluate to true. So here, if I run this, you can see that this is now true. So in here, I do have two expressions, so one and then two, but you could say, for example, or, and you can combine as many expressions that you want. And to be honest, this is it. So they are really simple, but use quite a lot when performing decisions, as you'll see with if statements. Let's go ahead together and learn about the if statement. The if statement allows us to execute a piece of code based off a condition. So you've learned about the comparison operators and logical operators, and they evaluate to true or false, right? And then the logical operators allows us to combine one or more Boolean expression. So what if statements allows us to do is to run a piece of code depending on a condition. So here, let's say that, let me just say if, so this is the syntax and then true. So this code right here, so here, let me just say console.log and then I'm gonna say runs. So this code runs. And if I run this code, you can see that the output is runs. Now, if I change this to false and then run this, you can see that there is nothing on the console. So also, if I take this and then say in here, sum and then code. So this line right here will always run, right? Because it's not part of the if condition. So if I run this, you can see that we have some code. If I change this to true, now this is, uh, this condition is true. Therefore, this piece of code will run. So if I run it, you can see that we have runs and then some code. Now, if I want this code right here to run, if this condition is false, I can take this and then I can say else. So if else. So here I'm going to say else condition and then run. So if I run this, you can see that if true, this condition runs. If it's false, then this condition will run. So here, if I flip this value, if I say here, not true with exclamation mark, my bad. Just like that. If I run this now, you can see that else condition run. So this is really cool. Now this, condition right here, we can basically take, for example, a variable. So here, let's just say var, and then I'm gonna say condition, and then here I'm gonna say equals to, and then one greater than zero. So this is just one condition, right? And then I can say condition here, and now basically one is greater than zero, of course, run it, you can see that runs. And if I say one is less than zero, the else condition will run. So this is if else condition. Now I could also have, so in here I could say, so let me just comment this. I could also take uh, a variable. So let's just say var and then gender equals two and then M. Now in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if and then gender equals two and then M. We're going to say print, so console.log and then mail. We can also say else. And then basically here I can say console.log and then female and then unknown, right? So unknown. But obviously we know that we have other genders. So for example, if I want to say if it's F, right, we want to print female. But 
in this scenario right here. So if I run this code, you can see that we have M because M equals to the gender. But if I change this to F, for example, you can see that it's unknown. So we know that this is female. So let's just say here, we're going to basically after if we're going to say else and then if so this is another keyword and then here I can say gender equals to and then F if this is the case so let me just put this like this so if this is the case I'm going to log female there we go female here and otherwise unknown. So here, check this out. If I run this, you can see that now it's female. If I change this to M, there we go, male. And if I change this to hello, for example, you can see that this is unknown. So this is how you use if statements and they're very easy to use. So you've seen that you can have if on its own. If you have multiple conditions, you can use else if in here. So you can have as many else if statements that you want. So here, for example, if you want to have so another gender else if, for example, and then here. So this will be another condition, right? So here you could say gender equals to and then let's just say female like that, right? Fee male. And basically we could just say or in here, right? So uh, or right here. So we could say or gender equals to female, but I'm just showing you um, that you can have multiple else if statements, right? So here else if, and then here, let's just take this, paste that in. And if I run this, this is female. If I say female right here, female, and then run, you can see that this works. If I say female, that doesn't work. This still says female, but it's because right here I've missed the equal sign. So here, and then run this, you can see that this is unknown, right? So you can have as many else if statements. And then the last one right here is basically whatever you cannot handle with the uh, conditions above. So let me actually take this right here. So I'm gonna take this, copy that, and I'm gonna delete this. And here I can just have, or for example, so you've learned about logical operators and it's the exact same thing. If you have any questions on if statements, go ahead and drop me a message. Otherwise, catch me in the next one. Let's go ahead together and learn about the if statement. The if statement allows us to execute a piece of code based off a condition. So you've learned about the comparison operators and logical operators, and they evaluate to true or false, right? And then the logical operators allows us to combine one or more Boolean expression. So what if statements allows us to do is to run a piece of code depending on a condition. So here, let's say that, let me just say if, so this is the syntax and then true. So this code right here, so here, let me just say console.log and then I'm gonna say runs. So this code runs. And if I run this code, you can see that the output is runs. Now, if I change this to false and then run this, you can see that there is nothing on the console. So also, if I take this and then say in here, sum and then code. So this line right here will always run, right? Because it's not part of the if condition. So if I run this, you can see that we have some code. If I change this to true, now this is, uh, this condition is true. Therefore, this piece of code will run. So if I run it, you can see that we have runs and then some code. Now, if I want this code right here 
to run if this condition is false I can take this and then I can say else so if else so here I'm gonna say else condition and then run so if I run this you can see that if true this condition runs if it's false then this condition will run so here if I flip this value if I say here not true with exclamation mark my bad just like that if I run this now you can see that else condition run so this is really cool now this condition right here we can basically take for example a variable so here let's just say var and then I'm gonna say condition and then here I'm gonna say equals to and then one greater than zero so this is just one condition right and then I can say condition here and now basically one is greater than zero of course run it you can see that runs and if I say one is less than zero the else condition will run so this is if else condition now I could also have so in here I could say so let me just comment this I could also take uh, a variable so let's just say var and then gender equals to and then m now in here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if and then gender equals to and then m we're going to say print so console.log and then mail we can also say else and then basically here I can say console.log and then female and then unknown right so unknown but obviously we know that we have other genders so for example if I want to say if it's F right we want to print female but in this scenario right here so if I run this code you can see that we have M because M equals to the gender but if I change this to F for example you can see that it's unknown so we know that this is female so let's just say here we're going to basically after if we're going to say else and then if so this is another keyword and then here I can say gender equals to and then F if this is the case so let me just put this like this so if this is the case I'm going to log female there we go female here and otherwise unknown so here check this out if I run this you can see that now it's female if I change this to M there we go male and if I change this to hello for example you can see that this is unknown so this is how you use if statements and they're very easy to use so you've seen that you can have if on its own if you have multiple conditions you can use else if in here so you can have as many else if statements that you want so here for example if you want to have so another gender else if for example and then here so this will be another condition right so here you could say gender equals to and then let's just say female like that right fee male and basically we could just say or in here right so uh, or right here so we could say or gender equals to female but I'm just showing you um, that you can have multiple else if statements right so here else if and then here let's just take this paste that in and if I run this this is female if I say female right here female and then run you can see that this works if I say female that doesn't work this still says female but it's because right here I've missed the equal sign so here and then run this you can see that this is unknown 
right? So you can have as many else if statements. And then the last one right here is basically whatever you cannot handle with the uh, conditions above. So let me actually take this right here. So I'm going to take this, copy that, and I'm going to delete this. And here I can just have or for example, so you've learned about logical operators, and it's the exact same thing. If you have any questions on if statements, go ahead and drop me a message. Otherwise, catch me in the next one. Let's learn about the ternary if statement. Let's say that we have a variable right here, and then we're going to say number equals to two. And we want to check if this number is even or odd. So if, and then number, and then here I'm going to say mod, and then two equals to zero. So if this number mod two equals to zero, we know that it's even. So console.log and then even. Otherwise, so else, we know that it's odd. So console.log and then odd. So if I run this code right here, you can see that we have even. If I change this to one, one it's even. If I change this to zero, zero is even. Oh, actually, sorry, one is odd, my bad. There we go. And I can pretty much pick any number. So six, we know that six is even, so on and so forth. Now here you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five lines. Now the ternary if statement is for scenarios where you only have if and else, and inside of each of the statements, you only have one single line right here. So here we're just returning whether it's even or odd, right? So in scenarios like this, we can replace this if statement. So let me just comment all of it. And we can replace all of that with, so here I'm going to say, so right here, I'm going to say var result equals to, and then I'm going to take this condition right here, paste that, and then I'm going to say question mark, right? So if this is true, so I'm asking a question, if this is true, I'm going to say even right here. Otherwise, so else, I'm going to say it's odd. And then end this with semicolon. Now you can have more than one condition within the ternary if statement, but I don't advise you to do that because it can be really complex and hard to debug. So when you have simple scenarios like this, it's really great to use the ternary if statement. So now if I say console.log and then result, you can see that, so if I run this, it works, right? So here we have even, if I change this to, for example, 101, this is odd. So you can see that we went from one, two, three, four, five lines of code into one line. And this is really awesome. You've seen how if statements work, we can also use the switch statement to perform almost the same thing as the if statement. So the syntax is a little bit different. So in here, let's take this if statement and convert it into a switch statement. So the way it works is as follows. So here I want to say switch and then the switch takes the value that we want to switch in our case gender so this gender right here is this variable now inside in here we have something called cases so we have case and then here the case is the actual value that we are looking for here i'm going to say case it's m and then column right here and then console.log, and then here I'm going to say mail. We can also take right here, so I'm going to say case, and then here I'm going to say f, and then here console.log, and then female. So you can see how it is almost very similar to if, 
but sometimes it's a bit nicer to use the switch statement. And then if you want the else part right here, so the default, we have the default, so default keyword within the um, switch statement. So here I'm going to say, let me just copy this and be a little bit lazy. So take this, command C, and then paste that in. So you see how it works. So here, let me just take this and delete it completely right here. And if I run this, let's see what happens. So here you can see that unknown, and this is because this doesn't match anything within our cases. So case M or F. So if I change this to M right here or F. So if I change this to F right here and then run it, you can see that we have female as well as unknown. Now what is happening? So basically it actually uh, goes through, it says, all right, so the gender equals to F. So I'm going to run this and then it carries on and also it runs the default case by default. Now to fix this, we need to include a statement called break. So here, if I say break and right here, let me just use a semicolon all around just like that. So now if I run this, you can see that we only have female. So break, it's really important and it should be used everywhere. So here I can say break as well. And for the default, there is no need to say break because it's a default case, right? So here now, if I run this, you can see that this works. If I change this to M and then run it, you can see that we have male. And if I change this to hello, run this, you can see that we have unknown. This is how to use switch statements with JavaScript. If you have any questions, drop me a message. Otherwise, catch me in the next one. In this section, let's understand why using the var keyword is a bad practice and how to solve it. Now, the reason why I've been using the var keyword throughout the course is because I want to teach you JavaScript the right way. So var used to be the old way of declaring variables. If you still see programs that still use var keyword, is because they are still using the old versions of JavaScript. Now, let me demonstrate to you why using var it's really bad. So in here, let me go ahead and pretty much just type four. And then here I'm going to say var i equals to zero and then semicolon. And then I'm going to say i is less or equal to 10. And then I'm going to say semicolon and then i plus plus. So I want to increment I. So here, let me just say console.log and then I. So if I run this program, you can see this is zero all the way to 10. Now in here, I want you to think about this. So if I say console.log and then I, what do you think the output for this function will be? Now here, we are declaring the variable here inside of this for loop. So technically it should really be available within the scope of this for loop, right? So anything inside of this for loop. But if I run this code, have a look. I in here, so I is 11. So let me just say here, value of I outside and then loop. And then let me just say plus in there. There we go. And if I put this a little bit smaller, so you see everything, there we go. So basically if I run this, you can see that value of I outside the loop in here. So this is bad, right? Because we are declaring a variable in here and then we expect it to only be accessible within the scope of this loop, but we can actually access it 
outside of the loop. Now, what is happening here, it's called hoisting. It's called hoisting. Now, what this means is that when the uh, interpreter runs this code, what it does is it looks at the all the variables that you have declared using the var keyword, and then it does this. So basically, it says var and then i, just like that. And then here, I can say just i. And then here, if I run this program, you can see that this is the exact same thing. So this is what's happening behind the scenes when we run this code using the var keyword. So whatever variable that you have defined in here, it basically hoists the variables at the very top. So here, if I have, for example, a, a variable called brand, it will just do this var and then number, for example, or uh, value of pi if I define, or if I have a person, for example, object, it just does this. So it declares all the variables at the very top. And then this is why for i in here, so if I delete this again, so here if I say var, so this is why I can access i outside of the scope of this loop right here. And again, this is called hoisting, which means just, which which means, which simply means that the comp which means that which simply means that which simply means that the interpreter looks at your variables that you declare with var, and then assigns them in here at the very top of the file without the actual value, and then when it reaches line four, it actually assigns a value i equals to zero. And then this is why we can access it outside of the scope of this loop right here. Next, let me go ahead and teach you a better way of declaring variables. So now you know the reason why using var is bad practice. Now, in order for us to solve this issue where, so in here, so if I just delete these two variables, so in order for us to solve the issue where we declare var in here, and then its value can be read outside of the scope of this function, we can use the let keyword to define our variables. So here, instead of var, I can say let. So here I'm saying let and then i, and basically it's the exact, and basically it's the exact same thing, but hoisting, it's not taking place. So here, if I just comment out this line for a second, and if I run this, you can see that we have numbers zero through 10, but here, let's try to access i, so the value of i outside of this for loop. So if I uncomment this, and then if I run this, have a look. So we go zero through 10 right here, but as soon as we try to access the value of i, we get an error. And you can see that here it says uh, line number eight, and it refers to this line. So this is how you really should be declaring your variables. Next, let me go ahead and teach you yet another keyword that allows you to create variables. So you've seen that I said we should be using the let keyword to define variables. So here, if I say let and then brand equals to and then amigos and then code. And here I can console the brand. So here console.log and then I can say brand. Right now in here, what I want to show you is the following. If I run this program, you can see that we have amigos code. Now, if I want, I can say brand in here equals to an object. So have a look now. If I run this program, you can see that this is now an object. I can also say that, right, so the brand is equal to and then a number. So 10, for example, if I run this, you can see that the brand now is 10. Right, so you can see that it's kind of a mess, right? So I initially said that a brand 
it's a set of characters, amigos code, and then I told you that it's an object, a number, and I could even say that brand equals to, and then a function right here, and this function right here, uh, let's just say return, and then here I'm gonna say hello, for example, right? So now if I run this, you can see it's a function, and I can invoke it like so, so brand, and then invoke it like that, and you can see that we have hello. So we went from a string all the way to a function. So this really is bad practice. So what I really want is to basically say that this variable right here, so brand, so this variable right here called the brand, it should be a constant, i.e. no reassignment is allowed. So no reassignment is allowed. So I don't want anyone to come in and change it to an object or to a number or to a, a function. So to fix this, I can say const in here. Now from this point onwards, if I try to reassign it to something else, this will not work. If I run this, have a look, we have an error. Type error, assignment to constant variable. So this is really nice, right? So now this is no longer possible. So if I comment this out, and if I run this, uh, this should be uh, not a function, it should be just a variable and have a look, we have amigos code. Now, if you are using strings, this has a special meaning. So this means that this string right here is a constant and the value cannot change. So strings are really immutable in JavaScript, right? So once I define this brand variable right here, this value right here cannot change right? We cannot reassign and we cannot change the value in it. However, if I uncommon this line here, and if I say brand and then object, and if I say const, for example, so this means that no reassignment is allowed into this object. But what I can do is I can say, so here I can say brand object, or oh, actually, let me just first print out the brand object for you. So console.log, and then brand, and then object. And if I run this, have a look, it's an empty object, right? But here, I can say brand object. And then inside, I can basically say brand equals to, and then a string. So amigos code, or I can even say brand in here. So let's just take the variable brand. So now if I run this, have a look. You can see that I'm actually appending properties into this object, right? So I can actually add properties into the object, but what I'm not allowed is to say that brand object equals to something else. So a number, for example, right? So no reassignment is allowed. So if I run this, you can see that we have an error. However, you can actually mutate the object. So here I can type, for example, delete, and then brand object dot, and then brand, which is the property. So if I run this, have a look, what's gonna happen? We should have an empty object in here. So I added brand, and then I deleted, and you can see that I'm performing mutation. So the const keyword for a string, it means that the string is actually a constant, so the value will never change. So I cannot, for example, uh, change the contents of this string right here. However, if you are using, for example, an object, you can actually mutate the contents of the object and not reassign the object variable here to a different data type. And basically, this is how you define constants and how you prevent reassignment to your variables. Now, you might be asking, well, 
when do I use let or when do I use const? And let me cover that in the next video. So the question is, when should you use the const keyword versus the let keyword, as you saw in here? So what is recommended is that for everything that you do in JavaScript, you should start with the const keyword. So if you want to declare a variable, you declare using the const keyword. A function, a const keyword. An object, a const keyword. So pretty much every single variable that you need, including functions, they should start with the const keyword. Then if you need to reassign, so if you need reassignment, for example, you use the let keyword. So what I mean reassignment, I mean, so in the example where I've showed you the let keyword in here, have a look. So here, so if I was to start this with const and then I, and then run this program, this doesn't work, right? Because in here, so I plus plus is the same as saying, so I equals to I and then plus and then one. So you can see that here we are assigning I to the current value plus one, right? So here we are saying equal. Now, if we use the const keyword, you know that this is not possible. So here it is totally fine to use the let keyword. So inside loops, it's a good example and you should use the let keyword. Anything else that you, for example, don't need to do things like this, you use the const keyword. So here, const keyword. So I said a function, so we're going to cover functions later. So, but here, for example, instead of saying function and then hello, so for example, so if I say this, so here I can go and say hello equals to, and then one, for example. And if I run this program here, you can see that this works. And if I say console.log and then hello, you'll see that hello is a number. So if I basically run it, you'll see that it went from a function to a number. So instead, what you do is you define this function as follows. You say const hello equals and then to the function and here I can remove the name because we define the name here. So again, I'm going to teach you about this way of creating functions later. But if I run this program, have a look, we have an error. So this is no longer possible as you see here. So line 17 is this one. So I need to basically, uh, let me just comment this. So if I now run this program, you can see that it works. Right. And if I was to say, for example, here, console.log and then hello. And then here, I need to invoke this. I just want to show you that this actually works. So run it. And there we go. And this is undefined. And this is because I'm doing console.log to a function that doesn't return anything. So here, I just need to say hello and then invoke the function. So if I run it now, you can see that we have hello in here. There we have it. Always start with the const keyword. And if you need to reassign, as you saw in this loop example, then use the let keyword and do not use the var. So here, so the var keyword. So do not ever use this again. Don't use the var keyword again. This is all for this section. If you have any questions, drop me a message. Otherwise, catch me on the next one. Oh, right. I hope you had fun throughout this course. If you want to enroll to the entire course, go ahead and check the links in the description of this video. I'm going to leave a coupon code where you can have the course for $19.99. So dead cheap and uh, enroll and pretty much just be part of the successful stories for Amigos Code. So here, a bunch of my students already managed to secure jobs, internships, and they literally changed their lives to pursue the career that they really want. And now they are changing the world too. 
this is all for now i hope that you enjoyed if you haven't subscribed subscribe comment down below and also join the private facebook group and discord the community is growing and uh, yeah i'll catch you in the next one assalamu alaikum